I'm Roisin, a respiratory nurse. Doctors and nurses have died. We need to stay healthy so we can help you. You can help save our lives. Stay at home. Healthcare workers around the world pleading with the public, asking each person to do their part and stay at home to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Plus, despite Africa at one point reporting very few cases of the coronavirus, the continent is seeing a surge. A look at how African nations are responding. Okay, this morning, Philly, you have rainfall around you. The same story into the D.C. area, but more rainfall will be moving in during the next 24 hours. I have those details coming up in weather. Care workers who are doing God's work. They are doing God's work. Can you imagine the nurses who leave their homes in the morning, who kiss their children goodbye, go to a hospital, put on gowns, deal with people who have the coronavirus. They're thinking all day long, oh my God, I hope I don't get this. Oh my God, I hope I don't get this and bring this home to my children. People around the country thankful for the men and women working to save lives. Nurses and doctors exhausted, but still coming to our aid. Many in the U.S. concerned about safety and protection while on the job. John Lawrence has the latest on the growing coronavirus crisis. The coronavirus's grip on the United States just gets tighter. In Michigan, uh, cases went from 65 to 1,300 in, in one week. In Louisiana, basically no cases to close to 1,400 in one week. Florida and Georgia increasing by 20 percent. At least 163 COVID-related deaths were reported Tuesday, setting a grim record for the U.S. Half of those that have tested positive to date in the state of California are 18 to 49 years old. This disease impacts everybody. New York State is dealing with the most cases thus far. How can we be in a situation where you can have New Yorkers possibly dying because they can't get a ventilator, but a federal agency saying, I'm going to leave the ventilators in the stockpile? As leaders fight for equipment and other help, doctors, nurses, and caregivers are working on those who've contracted the virus. We are terrified. Everybody is terrified. Uh, we feel an obligation to take care of our patients. Everybody does, but we don't want to become sick and we also don't want to become carriers, nor do we want to be so disabled that we can't care for people. And the number of those who are ill keeps rising. If things don't slow down, I'm concerned about several weeks from now. President Trump says he would like to see restrictions on residents lifted by Easter, but health officials in his administration say a wait and see attitude is needed. Country wants to go back to work. And and again, the cure, it's it's like this cure is is worse than the problem. Again, people, many people, in my opinion, more people are going to die if we allow this to continue. We have to go back to work. Our people want to go back to work. The White House says it has reached a deal with Congress for a stimulus package to help jolt the struggling economy as a coronavirus pandemic continues. Days of marathon negotiations have resulted in a $2 trillion proposal, one of the most expensive and far-reaching measures in the history of Congress. While details have yet to be released, the breakdown looks like this $250 billion for direct payments to individuals and families. $350 billion in small business loans, $250 billion in unemployment insurance benefits, and $500 billion in loans for distressed companies. Like all compromises, this bill is far from perfect, but we believe the legislation has been improved significantly to warrant its quick consideration and passage because many Democrats and Republicans we're willing to do the serious and hard work. The bill is much better off than where it started. Democrats have su succeeded in making the bill substantially better on many counts. 
The deal also creates an inspector general and oversight committee for the corporate assistance program. Coronavirus was slow to affect Africa, but the continent is starting to see a surge of infections and even some deaths. BNC's C.E. Huffman gives us a look at how the many nations of Africa are preparing to protect their people. As the spread of coronavirus moves into the world's largest continent, South Africa, preparing to enact a public lockdown Thursday, the streets of Cape Town already clearing. The nationwide lockdown is necessary to fundamentally disrupt the chain of transmission across society. I have accordingly directed the South African National Defense Force to be deployed to support the South African Police Service in ensuring that the measures we are announcing are implemented. South Africa's president announcing the nationwide lockdown would last for at least 21 days. In Johannesburg, citizens are racing to stock up on supplies before essentials disappear. We've got children that we look after. We've got foster children that we need to feed. So we've just got the basic and they know. There's no fancy foods, it's your normal healthy eating just to keep going for the next 21 days. But no panic buying at all. South Africa's number of confirmed cases reaching over 550 Tuesday, the highest in sub-Saharan Africa. Public health officials are worried that it could overwhelm the health system if infection rates continue to rise. I think in this country with the Although we are doing this lockdown earlier than most other countries have, as it was pointed out, we have a tremendous township population that is extremely vulnerable. And if the coronavirus lets loose in the townships, there's going to be absolute carnage. Under the public lockdown, South Africans will still be able to leave their homes to buy food, seek medical care and collect social grants. But like most lockdowns, all shops and businesses will be closed, except for essentials, including pharmacies, banks, supermarkets, and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Meanwhile, plane loads of protective and medical equipment donated by a Chinese billionaire arriving in Kenya, where officials confirm they offloaded test kits and a variety of protective gear from an Ethiopian Airlines plane that landed in Nairobi Tuesday. We have received 20,000 test kits from the Jack Ma Foundation. And, uh, and, assorted, uh, and assorted personal protective equipment, uh, which will quickly be able to deploy to our, our emergency operation center, the isolation unit in Bagabi, and Kenyatta National Hospital. For the Black News Channel, I'm C.E. Huffman. According to the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, the African nation of Egypt is leading in confirmed deaths with 20 as of Tuesday night. Spanish state-run funeral services are no longer able to collect the bodies of coronavirus patients as they lack the necessary protective equipment. Instead, a public ice rink in Madrid has been converted to a house of hundreds of bodies arriving each day. The bodies are being handled by the military. One in every five Madrid nursing homes has an infection of the coronavirus. In fact, the military has found dead bodies inside those nursing homes when they've gone to disinfect. The Spanish Parliament will vote on an extension of the state of emergency in Spain today. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is uh, talking more about his order to have those traveling from New York to self-quarantine for 14 days when they travel to the state. He helped clarify what travelers should do once they get to Florida. Anybody traveling from the New York City area uh, to the state of Florida or who has traveled um, in the last three weeks is going to need to self-isolate and they're going to need to report uh, the contacts that they've had, any close contacts with anybody in the state of Florida um, and, and mainly notifying the people they've been in contact with. The Florida National Guard is now assisting with health screenings on travelers from the New York City area at airports in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, Tampa, and Jacksonville. If I get Corona, I get Corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. You know, I've been waiting. We've been waiting for Miami spring break for a while. About two months we've had this trip planned. You may have seen Brady Slutter's now viral comments while he was on spring break last week in Miami Beach. Well, now 
he's actually apologizing. He released this statement on his Instagram page, apologizing for what he's calling an insensitive comment. He says he was not aware of the severity of his actions and that he's learning and reflecting from this. Maybe his parents yeah. saw those comments and, you know, spoke to him. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. You know, you can apologize and things like that. But, you know, uh, Corona is very, uh, you know, important out there, very dangerous. Yeah, and serious. so, you know, spring breaks and sometimes you think you're young. You're invincible, but, but you're not. No, you're not. Mm -mm. There you go. Let's take a look at the tower cam as we begin another a day across the United States. And we're going to first travel to the Sunshine State. Not so sunny this morning. Mm -hmm. There you go. Into Jacksonville, experiencing a little bit of a cloudy sky. Temperatures into the 70s, but hey, it's rainy in the Raleigh Durham. Uh, temperatures into the 40s. Be aware of that. Let's get to what's happening at least across on the radar scope across the uh, least folks into the northeast and we're dealing with some shower activity that's pushed into the DC area extending down toward Richmond even some snowfall into New York State then down toward the south we're dealing with some rumbles of thunder as you make your way toward the Carolinas this is all along a frontal boundary that's very weak now flash flood watch is currently in effect until 8 a.m. this is for folks in the northern Georgia as well as folks into the uh, Appalachian Mountains meanwhile very quiet start into Florida this is SR 618, uh, very quiet, of course, into Tampa, St. Petersburg area, not experiencing any problem there. Midwestern states, we're dealing with a clipper system. Rain and snowfall into South and North Dakota. This will eventually start to spread into Minneapolis. And we're dealing with a little bit of some rain and snow with the western storm system across the west. I remind everyone, if it is raining in your area, of course, wipers on, lights on, and some folks across some states, that is the state law. So airport delays, New York City, Philly, Baltimore, D.C., Richmond, Raleigh, Durham, and then we have a chance for some storms in the Charlotte, Midwestern storm system, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Rochester, Minnesota, Omaha, Nebraska, then the West, Salt Lake City, Reno, a little bit of some snow showers, Portland and Seattle, watch out for some rain. Take a look at those temperatures out the door into the east, 41 in New York City, we're 46 in the D.C., you travel down toward the south, 72 in Miami, even 72 into New Orleans, those feels like temperatures. 22 in the Fargo feels like 35 or so into Denver. Let's take a look at the national cast. Folks across the east, get ready for that rainfall. That's going to be coming to an end later this uh, evening. Then we have that Midwestern Clipper, and then across the west, there's your mountain snow with another storm system that's on the horizon. So local high temperatures today, Boston, 43 degrees. Rain chances at around 20 percent. For 49, around 90 percent rain chances in the Richmond, and 85, mostly sunny, breezy, into the Sunshine State. That's Tampa, St. Petersburg. For your latest weather information, just click on to Facebook, Facebook Live, and Twitter, the BlackNewsChannel.com. So there we go on this Wednesday morning. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Still to come, more testing is becoming available across the country for the coronavirus. We'll tell you what you should know about those tests. Plus, a popular toolkit is being recalled. Does your child have this? Well, we'll tell you more about the recall. Stay with us. We'll be right back.